I'm going to talk to you today about faith. I'm going to be going over a bunch of scriptures talking about this very important subject, but I have to ask you a very personal, very pressing question. Are you really living by faith? Well, sure, brother. I, I got saved by grace through faith. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. That's good. You've been saved by grace through faith. Praise the Lord. Um, but there's different salvations. Okay? Uh, first salvation is the salvation of the sinner. You come to the Lord, and uh, the worse sinner you are, the better chance you have at getting saved, because that means there's less self-righteousness. Okay? Um, I'm a pretty wicked sinner. Okay, then get saved. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He was buried not like uh, Muhammad or Buddha or any of the other, you know, wicked people out there. No, Jesus was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He's different than the other leaders of religions out there. Jesus did something that nobody else was able to do. Saved by grace through faith. But now your second salvation shows up. You say, what's that? You have to save your life from the mess that you've made of it over the years before you got saved before your eternal salvation. Now you have to work on the salvation of what you've done. Okay, uh, let him that stole steal no more. Okay, in the book of Ephesians, why? Because if you keep stealing, you're going to go to jail. Uh, you can't keep stealing as a Christian. You can't keep uh, just getting plastered drunk as a Christian. I'm not saying that you won't fall and mess up occasionally. Yeah, I get that. But what I'm saying is, when you continue to live in sin, it eventually leads to your death. All sin is negative. All sin is destructive. But how do you get that new life that comes after salvation? After the Lord says, okay, I'll save you. You're a sinner. You've come to me. You can't save yourself. Put your faith in what I did on the cross, how I was buried and rose again from the dead. You believe the Bible. You've called upon me to be saved. Okay, boom, you're saved. Now, how do you have the new life? You have to live by faith. Okay? So let's go through the scriptures. I'm going to give you a couple little uh, jabs today. Some things that are going to make a lot of you very uncomfortable. But things that you need to examine. First and foremost, let's go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Habakkuk. You say the what, huh? If you're newly saved, the book of what? Habakkuk. Back in the Old Testament, right before you get to the New Testament, there's a bunch of little books that are usually pretty hard to pronounce and very hard to memorize. They're correct order. Um, they're called the Minor Prophets. Okay, And one of those is called Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. The first time that the live by faith shows up here. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. In other words, when you lift up yourself, you think that you're great. It's not working. It's not good. But, contrast. See, we're seeing a, a, there's a but here. Contrast. But, the just shall live by his faith. Did you get that? If you are just another way to say just. You're justified. When you get saved, you're justified. Now you're no longer under condemnation. You're no longer under God's judgment. Now God says, okay, I've justified you by my blood that I shed on the cross. Are you just now? I get, I get really irritated. I hear people, you know, they say, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm no saint. <laughs> well, if you're a Christian, you are a saint. Uh, if you're a Christian, you do have to live differently. There's a change that happens. You're just now. You're no longer living a life of perpetual sin in terms of you just don't care. I realize that all, all are sinners and all people mess up. I'm not preaching sinless perfection. I never have preached against it, but people still put it on me. But another issue. But notice it says there, the just. Are you justified? Are you saved? Yes. Then how are you supposed to live? By faith. But not just by faith. By his faith. You have to do something. It's an action. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. 
Sin, sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Well, praise the Lord, but that's about eternal salvation. That's not talking about your life of sanctification. Okay? Uh, when you get saved, all the wicked things of your past don't just go poof. And all of a sudden you go, you know, God, please save me in, the, in, the, in Jesus' name, amen. Blink, and you open up your eyes and you're dressed in a white robe and you say, wow, I don't even think about sin anymore. <laughs> no, no. Um, you have to start fighting against that sin. You have to start to say, hey, you know what? I need to clean up some things here. God, please help me with this. I need to get victory over this sin. I need to get victory over that. You have to live by your faith. That's what it's talking about. You don't have to live a perpetual life of faith in order to someday obtain salvation. That's Roman Catholicism. You know, die in a state of grace and, you know, I, I've done venial sins and now, oh, I did a mortal sin and, oh, that's really bad. I have to get resaved or something. Venial sins can just be confessed to the priest and pay enough money in the confessional and then you get it forgiven kind of sort of, uh, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. That's satanic cult stuff. What we're talking about here is when you live by faith, when you live by your faith, his faith in the context there, it's just simply saying you have to start working now to sanctify things out of your life. You have to live by faith. Again, you get saved. What happens? In Jesus' name, amen. Open up your eyes and there's Jesus. And he says, okay, I'm going to tell you how to get rid of all your sins and I'm going to show you how to do this and I'll, I'll show you the right things to cook. And I, you know, no, you can't see him. Okay, there's just, you say, something about this thing is wrong. I mean, I, I won't ask for a show of hands because I can't see your hands anyhow, but um, how many of you out there have experienced this thing where you're doing something after you get saved and you think, there's something wrong about this, and I, I don't know what it is. There's just something does not seem right about this, but I don't know. Just something is just wrong. I, I don't know what it is. And it might be years later, and all of a sudden... Boom, the Lord shows you that that thing that you've been doing all that time was wrong. Oh, I didn't know the origin of that was that. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I, oh, boy. Well, how did you know it was wrong way back when before you knew the facts? Because it's revealed to you by faith. You can't see things, you see. You're living by your faith. God, I trust you in everything. And God says, okay, child, dear child. <laughs> That one thing that you're doing is wrong, okay? And I'm going to reveal some other things to you before I reveal this to you, but you need to stop. You hear a preacher and, and the preacher kicks something and you say, well, I do that. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, well, I don't think that that's wrong, but deep down you're saying, I don't really have a good answer for that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't really see what he's saying. That might be because it's by faith. Hmm. Romans chapter 1. I can't tell you how many things have been sanctified out of my life years and years after being saved. It still happens. I've been saved for a long time, called to preach, preaching the Word of God and everything else. If you saw my doctrine of imminence study, I've been preaching that thing for years, and it was just the Lord just kind of, you know, every time I'd preach it, you know, uh, he, Jesus could have come back at any time and whatever. It was always kind of a, geez, I don't think something's just wrong there. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, but I, you know, just keep preaching it because it's what I was taught. And finally, it's Lord says, uh, that needs to go. All right. I have to live by the faith, my faith. All right. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What's Paul referring to? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 that we just read. As it is written, quoting from the Old Testament. So don't say, well, you know, I'm a dispensational, hyper-dispensational believer. I only listen to the Apostle Paul. Well, Paul just referred back to the Old Testament. What are you going to do with that? The whole Bible 
You need to read the whole Bible. Understand that you have to rightly divide it. I get that. You don't have to sacrifice animals today. Okay? Um, you're not looking forward to the cross or some other kind of a thing. Uh, like they say that they were in the Old Testament or, you know, non-dispensational heretics will say that. Try to pull that one off. <clears throat> um, but you need to read the whole Bible and understand that many times Paul's referring back to the Old Testament. Very important. But here's the point of Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. What is the gospel? <clears throat> I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You won't be if you're a Christian, if you're truly saved. For it is the power of God unto salvation. There's power there. You say, well, it's the power that, you know, it's resurrection power that I get. You know, I'll be going up someday. I have the promise of being resurrected. Amen. That's exactly true. But it doesn't end there. Now you have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life to start to convict you of sin, to help you in your walk in faith, where you don't exactly see, you don't exactly understand it. You just think, I don't know what it is, but something's wrong here. And the Lord reveals it to you later on. You need to walk by faith. Living by faith. Well, then there should be victory of sin over sin. Not victory of sin. Victory over sin. Heard a professing Christian, a one-time chiropractor I was going to, back when I was living in Pennsylvania, and he said, he's this guy just rattle mouth, you know, he's talking, he couldn't get a word in edgewise unless he asked you a yes or no question. And then he went back to talking again. And he said, uh, he said, you know, he said, we had a pastor come to our church this past Sunday. And he said, he, he really challenged us. And he said, you know, has God really done anything, showed you anything in the last 10 years of your life? And he said, I, you know, I'd come to think of it, I, he really hasn't. And I thought, have you become a stronger Christian? Has God done anything for you, showed you anything in 10 years? And you can say no to that? And, and you still think you're saved? That's a problem, okay? Um, if the Holy Spirit's not there convicting you of sin, um, it's because you're not saved, okay? I didn't say you won't sin as a Christian. I never said that. But I'm saying the Holy Spirit ought to be there and kind of convict a little bit, you know? Uh, some changes there. Live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Have you been justified? You say, oh, absolutely. Are you living by faith? No, I prefer sight. <laughs> <sighs> we'll see about that. Galatians chapter 2. Go to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. Turn in your King James Bible. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hmm. How do you get that power of God? Uh, I think it's, uh, I am crucified with Christ. Mortifying your members. Victory over sin. How you doing, Christian? Oh, brother, not so good. <coughs> I, I got this smoking problem, and, and, you know, I got drunk the other night, and my wife is leaving me. Is, it, is that a victorious Christian life? No. <laughs> no. I praise the Lord, brother. You know, I used to be an alcoholic and I got victory over that a number of years ago. I haven't had a drop since and, and uh, I had a pornography problem and I got rid of that. And I've been in and out of jail before I got saved and praise the Lord. I, I haven't gone back. The Lord's given me a great job. And, and I, I met this wonderful Christian lady and we got married and we have, you know, a, we had a child together and another one's on the way. And, and, and just, what life do you want? Oh, you know, as for me and my house, we just like to dabble around in sin and just kind of, you know, you know, go after the world. And we, we don't, you know, we're going to win the world by looking like the world, you know. We just want to kind of just be like the world. 
Is that living by faith or living by sight? I think that would be by sight. I am crucified with Christ. Are you crucified with Christ? Hmm. Does the world hate you like it hated Jesus Christ? Or do you want to live at peace with everybody and not offend people? Uh, uh, brother, uh, <clears throat> on to the next subject, please. Uh, no, we're not going to the next subject. Um, can I speak frankly? If you're not offending anybody, you're not right with God. I'll say that one more time. If you're not offending anybody, you're not right with God. The offense of the cross is there. You're going to offend people. You get around lost people, they don't like you. They don't want to be around you. Oh, it's just your outward uniform or something that you put on. You look like a good Baptist woman or something or a good, you wear a suit and tie. I mean, I've known Baptists, literally, they will not wear blue jeans because it's worldly. <laughs> they won't wear wire glasses, you know, like my glasses here. Don't wear them because of my reading. You know, I can't read with them on anymore. Uh, that's for farsightedness. That's, that's worldly. It has to be plastic frames. <laughs> I kid you not. I literally know of Baptist preachers that have said that they see Christians out in the world and they look like the heathen, amen. And what they mean is they're not wearing a suit and tie seven days a week. The Hiles variety kind of, you know, they used to do that. I guess they're, you know, all falling apart now. There's been so much perversion scandal in the Hiles system. But uh, I know guys like that. I've, I've uh, preached with guys like that, you know. It's worldly to wear jeans, blue jeans. Okay, uh, no, that's not what I mean by offending the lost. Okay, uh, I, I have suit and tie on and people feel uncomfortable around me. Well, they feel uncomfortable around Catholic priests too, you know. They feel uncomfortable when a nun walks by in her habit. Uh, your outward appearance and your little uniform that you wear does not count as offending the lost. You know? <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Uh, you're supposed to crucify your flesh. And the Holy Spirit's going to be there to convict you. Hmm. Can you see the Holy Spirit? No. Then it would almost be like by faith. Huh. What's the power of God? Holy Spirit in your life? That's wrong. I feel bad about that. I don't know what that is, but well, it'll be revealed later. But for now, just kind of not feel easy about that or whatever. Hey, that preacher just said something. You feel convicted, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, that'll be revealed later. What's going on? The just shall live by faith. Hmm. See, what's faith stand for? Heard this a, a while back. This is why I wrote, wrote it this way. Where did I put my... Oh, there it is. It's a good little way to, to say this. What does faith mean? Forsaking all. I'll write that in capital there. I trust Him. Real good way to say it. You say, I live by faith, okay? Have you forsaken all to trust Jesus Christ? If the Lord tells you to get rid of a certain thing, do you trust Him? Well, my conscience doesn't convict me. I've always have done this. I, I, I always, you know, I know other people that do it. Um, a little bit's not going to hurt me and whatever, yeah, rudiments of the world. <laughs> um, if the Lord convicts you, you better quit. There's places and times I'll go out in, in public and people will say things to my son and uh, my son will just ignore him. But when daddy says something, uh, he listens. He does. Why? Because he knows my voice. He knows, hey, that's my dad. That's my authority. These other people, they're not my authority. Do you listen to your father in heaven? Hmm. Hmm. Go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 11 through 14. 
but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit. The power of the gospel. Do you want to live a changed life? Did Abraham have a blessed life? Did Abraham, was he given inheritance in the future? Did God make certain promises to Abraham, an Abrahamic covenant? Yes. Do you want in on the good stuff? You say, oh yeah, absolutely I do. Then you need to live by faith. You say, well then, uh, okay, well, we'll all move up there to, to northern Maine and we'll become Denlingerites and you tell us what to do. We'll have a special, you know, catechism of the faith. We'll have ordnung. We'll have uh, special orders. We will all follow exactly, you know, no, no. Um, I can't tell you what to do with your life. I can't tell you to dress a certain way or do certain things or whatever else. I, the law is not going to do it. And I'm saying using that, but you know, Old Testament law, that you couldn't live by faith. Okay? That was there. I mean, there was a, a small degree of faith in the Old Testament. I get it. But the whole point is, it's don't touch this. You'll be unclean. You have to sacrifice that. You have to do this. You have to go to the priest and you have to do these things here and you have to go separate yourself from the camp for so many days. It's not faith. It's works. Somebody says, salvation has always been by grace through faith. You are a liar or very stupid. Um, only one of the two can happen. Uh, when you're looking at, there's the priest, there's the sacrifices, there's the altar, there's the holy of holies, there's the temple, there's the this, there's the that. That's not faith. It's not faith. You know, the reality of our lives as Bible-believing Christians, you walk through a town, um, you might be looking at churches and not even know it. You say, huh? I can see churches plainly. There's one right down the corner from me. If you're down a couple blocks, there's a big church. That's not what I mean. Those aren't churches. Those are pagan temples. Um, you look out at a crowd of people, there could be other Christians, saved Christians in there, and you can't tell. Almost like you have to live by faith, not by sight. Hmm. Um, well, <clears throat> I can tell, though, that I can tell a Levitical priest, though, because, you know, I can see that guy's got a suit and tie on and nobody else does. There's the priest. Oh, uh, well, that's right. Uh, no New Testament for any kind of special uh, garments for a preacher in the New Testament. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Living by faith. Hmm. How about that? We can't have law. To force faith into your life. I can't come along and say, if you're a subscriber of mine, you have to do this and that and whatever. Wear red and black buffalo plaid, you know. Yeah, otherwise, you're not an official Denningerite or something. That's a pretty good one. But <laughs> I can't do that. You know, if you don't have red and black, black buffalo plaid on, you're not living by faith. Well, what does that mean? You get a bunch of atheists and they could wear it just as a joke. It's not living by faith. Well, you have to come in, you have to do these things, and you have to be a, uh, in church every time the doors are open, whatever that means, wherever that's at in Scripture. I, in church every time the doors are open. I thought I was in church all the time. You know, where's, where are the doors having to be open for me to be in a church in here? I don't see it. I'm not a very good Baptist, I, I guess. But, uh, you see, there's no way that you can force faith on somebody. I can't come into your home and just judge you and judge you and judge you because there's a whole bunch of things that I wouldn't spot, that I wouldn't see. You see? You're living by faith. It comes from the power of the gospel that now the Holy Spirit comes into you. The promise of the Spirit comes in and says, that has to go, that has to go, that has to stop. And what the devil wants every Christian to do is to stop living by faith. Start trusting in his system. Well, living by faith, that stuff, that's dangerous. You could get hurt living by faith. Are you really providing for your family if this living by faith stuff 
That's not good. We'll talk more about that later. Hebrews chapter 10. There's always been an element of faith there, but uh, definitely stronger or lesser, depending on the different dispensation. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 and 39. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, interesting, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now, the book of Hebrews, if you understand things, or if you don't understand, I should say it that way, the book of Hebrews is written to a Jew, to a Hebrew, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus. So, right now, if you're saved and you're a Jew, you're a Christian. If you're saved and you're a Gentile, you're a Christian. But when Hebrews come back, you know, the time of uh, Jacob's trouble? Who's Jacob? Israel? Hmm. When the Hebrews come back, there's now an element of faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. You say, how do you figure? Okay, look at the verse. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Uh, if any man draw back? Draw back unto what? We are not of them who draw back unto perdition. There's a man in Rome, essentially, and he goes eventually over to Jerusalem to sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, the Antichrist. And he's also called the son of perdition. Huh. Drawing back onto perdition. Why would anybody in the time of Jacob's trouble draw back onto perdition, onto the Antichrist? Because they don't want to live by faith anymore. That's why they're commanded right there. The just shall live by faith. Verse 38. They have to live by faith. You say, but they're, they're seeing the book of Revelation come to pass. Yeah, they are. So there's an element of sight there now that they can see it. But the Lord's not going to provide for them like he provides for you and me today. They're not in his body. That's why there's now a thing there. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I've fallen into sin. I've done some stupid things since I've gotten saved. I'm still with the Lord, still part of his body. You are too if you're saved. You do dumb things. The Lord still has your, you know, he's still there for you. But what about somebody in the time of Jacob's trouble? They draw back, go over to the son of perdition and say, I'll take the mark. I'll worship the beast in his image. Why? Because I got tired of living by faith. I can't stand this anymore. This thing, I mean, I lost my job. What am I supposed to do for a living? I can't even drive on the roads. I can't, I can't go to the grocery store anymore. I can't get food. I can't this. I can't, I'm hunted down like an animal. <sighs> I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live by faith. Huh. You see the importance there? But go to chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The best definition of faith in the entire Bible is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It is something that you can't see. Hmm. Something that you can't see. Now, here's where you want to really kind of skip ahead because I'm going to offend a lot of you with what I'm about to say. Some of the things that I want to kick here are evidence that you're not living by faith. You ready? If you want to watch, examine yourselves. Say, okay, Holy Spirit, pause the video, in fact, and just say, Lord, please, uh, if you want to convict me through what Brother Brian's going to say, then have at it. Show me where I'm wrong. If not, show me where he's wrong. Okay? Here we go. Say, I'm living by faith, okay? Do you have an insurance policy? He said, well, well brother, we're required. Uh, I don't have a health insurance policy. Well, well, that's dangerous. What if something goes wrong? Well, you see, uh, I live by faith. And I'm not afraid of death. Okay? You say, what if, you, what if you're out there in the woods and you cut a tree down and it comes down wrong or the chain kicks back and you cut your leg really bad and you're bleeding to death? 
then I'll die. I'm not going to the hospital. You say, and I get this thing, I love this, and people say, uh, oh, you're just young yet, you, haven't, you don't know anything about pain. Um, I lived with a heart condition nearly all my life, a mitral valve prolapse. Um, I've had many accidents. I have plenty of scars on my body to prove that. Uh, I know a lot about pain, okay? I've had a couple times where I'm literally laying on the floor, barely even able to talk. I've been so sick and whatever else, my wife's praying for me and, and everything. I thought I was going to die numerous times. Don't tell me about it, all right? Uh, I have gray hair for a reason. Uh, and early on, you know, when I first got married to my wife, I was pretty much for health insurance. I thought, you know, well, I don't really need it, uh, but, you know, I, I guess there's some sense to it and whatever. She straightened me out on that, being coming from the, the military medical you know, training that she had and also, you know, being raised in the home of a mother that worked for the hospital. Uh, she straightened me out. I don't believe that way anymore. I live by faith. You know what I mean? You say, well, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I, I can see that. But, uh, you know, I have to have life insurance policy just in case something happens to me. I, uh, my wife and my children need to be provi provided for. Uh, <clears throat> can the Lord do that? Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I do remember the one part. I, I have to say this. I, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong here because I, I know the one part in the book of Acts, Paul, before he went on one of his journeys, I remember he had to stop in at the insurance agency to make sure that his premium was paid off before he went out and risked his life. Paul asked for prayer that one time. Remember that too in the book of Acts? I forget which chapter, but remember that time he got beaten and you know stripes and stuff on his back, remember, and, and his insurance company wouldn't cover it and he fought back and forth with them. He was on the phone for days. Huh? Knew a, a hireling the one time and he was bragging about how we got this big, beautiful new house and things because uh, the Lord provided. So what happened? Well, our first house burned down and we, you know, an insurance company came through and paid for our second one. Um, that's interesting. So your God is the insurance company? That's what he said. <laughs> God provided for us, the insurance company. <laughs> oh, but Brother Ryan, oh, you don't understand. You, do, you, don't, you don't understand. Uh, yeah, tell it to the Lord. Tell it to the Lord that you don't trust. <laughs> I'm going to lose sleep tonight over your, your nasty comments. Oh, I'm sure. You know, if you have insurance co coverage and insurance things and whatever else. You're not living by faith. Don't even tell me about it. Well, I have to have one for my vehicle. Okay, then get the very least one. Or do you have one that will cover your vehicle if you wreck it? Well, I, I don't have a choice. How about uh, another one? Ready? Kick number two. State marriage license. Well, we have to do what the state says. We can't just we can't just get married. I mean, we can't can't just live together and whatever else and have a bunch of other Christians there to witness our, our marriage and things and, and have a marriage coverture or, or a covenant or something. We can't do that. That would be illegal. I didn't happen to see where marriage licenses are in here. Could some of it, could one of you enlighten me where it says to get a state marriage license? I, I, anybody out there, you know, and, and I'll, I'll go out and run out and get one. We don't have one, my wife and I, you know, we live by faith. That's, you know, where's a state marriage license? Huh, well, but brother, you know, if I don't have a state marriage license, I can't write that off on my taxes. What am I going to do? I mean, it, it would look weird if I didn't have a state marriage license. I mean, I was going to a church anyways, and you know, the pastor, he went out and he got it for us, and he signed it and everything, and he said, now by the power invested in me in the state of whatever, I pronounce you man and wife. I tried to get it, you know, a coverture, and, my, and the pastor, he wouldn't do it. Are you really living by faith? <sighs> Hello. Uh, number three. You ready? Um, how about a cell phone? Now, just, you know, I'm watching you on my cell phone. Everybody that's watching this on a smartphone, post, you know, like my comment or something. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, 
why do you have a cell phone? Well, now, brother, now this one, I, I can't agree with you on because, I mean, if I'm driving down the road and I have an accident, okay, how am I supposed to call for help? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Just go without a phone? Uh, you know, like living by faith, uh, you know, yeah, uh, like people did for, uh, you know, I don't know, thousands of years? Huh? <laughs> um... You know, I recall being in high school as a young man in the 1990s, 94, we'll say, is when I graduated, 1994. Um, there were times I'd played hooky, and I'm very thankful for that. And my friend and I, we would go fishing, and we'd go down and we'd be out in the middle of nowhere, back roads, and, um, you know, if we would have had a breakdown or whatever else. Um, you know what we would have done? Started walking, <laughs> limped the vehicle home. Uh, or, you know, try to find somebody's house or flag somebody down and whatever else, you know, but uh, you can't live without those cell phones now. Then how did people do it for all that time? You know, uh, the cell phone is all about not living by faith. And I'm going to be coming out with other things kicking cell phones because they need to be kicked and kicked hard. Uh, it has turned into a satanic control, mind control, mind manipulation system. And uh, if you think I'm joking, right here is a book. I'm just starting to read it. Jaron Lanier. I know I'm not recommending the book. There's some profanity in it and whatever else. This guy right here basically created virtual reality. And he's talking about the dream of some of these early behaviorism guys was that they would be able to have a little computers in everybody's hands whereby they could manipulate the masses. And they said, well, that, that would never happen back in the early 1900s. People wouldn't be that stupid. And yet here we are. But brother, I can't get rid of it. I have to this and I have to. My job requires it. My life requires it. it not living by faith. Hmm. God can't provide. God can't protect. Yes, he can. I'm living proof of that. I had a track phone over 10 years ago, okay? Uh, I shouldn't say over 10 years. I guess it was maybe about eight years ago, I think, right around eight years ago, if I'm remembering correctly. I had it only for a few months, and it just threw the stupid thing out. And, and my wife and my son and I, we go out into the middle of nowhere, driving way back in the middle of nowhere where we don't see another vehicle all day, and we're fine. We get back home. Take along a bunch of things to fix a vehicle and limp it back home if I have to. God can't protect me. God, I just, I don't know what to do there. I haven't kicked you yet. Then here's another good one. How about uh, giving birth to a child at home versus the hospital? How about that one? Uh, well, what if something goes wrong? And what if, you know, I hear all that stuff. Um, what if something goes wrong at the hospital? Uh, you're pretty much guaranteed that something will go wrong at the hospital. I've heard from a lot of different women that, that talk about the nightmare of birthing at a hospital. It's terrible. It's terrible, the stuff that they do. It's humiliating. And they do, you know, to take the child and they take the little baby and they put silver nitrate, which is used to cauterize wounds. They put it into the eyes to, you know, for just in case there's gonorrhea or something like this. Um, they'll, they'll, vaccinate the child, a hepatitis B vaccine after, you know, like I think it's the first hour or two after the child has actually come out. <laughs> vaccinate them, you know, jamming a needle into a newborn baby. It's insane. Why would you go through that? Well, I just think it's a little dangerous to have a child at home. I just, I don't know if I could, you know, you don't know if you could what? Trust the Lord? You don't know if you could live by faith? How about uh, church building membership? I've been kicking that thing for so many years now. Here we go again, kick another one. Um, I have to have a place to get married. I mean, you know, where can I dedicate my baby if I don't go to church, Brother Brian? Huh? What about, uh, you know, weddings, funerals? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do without a church building? You know, we have to have insurance 
Uh, and, and we have to have an official church that we're part of. You know, hey, our homeschool association is, has to be tied into a church denomination. What are we supposed to do? Well, I don't know. Trust the Lord. I don't know. Live by faith. Peter Ruckman, who I think very highly of, but you know what? The guy was, a, it was wicked when it came to the church building thing. A church building idolater. That's what he was. His own statements from his own book, you know, you know, there's no New Testament church. There's no such thing as a, a new, new, new Testament church building, excuse me. Um, but, you know, we, ha we don't have a choice because otherwise, you know, we have to have church buildings because otherwise we'll look weird. We'll look like some kind of a weird fringe group. You can't live by faith. You can't follow the scriptures. And there's a whole lot more things I could kick, too. But, uh. There's another verse of scripture. We're not going to go there for sake of time, but whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Hmm. Brother Brian, I'm 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 saved. I'm I'm born again, saved by grace through faith, and everything else. I'm saved by faith, you know, and that Jesus died for my sins and the whole thing. I'm saved by faith, but I'm just not going to live by faith. That's a problem. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read the rest of the chapter here quickly because it's got some important things about the future. Start with verse 1 again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How can you really have evidence that Jesus Christ saved you if you don't live by faith? How can you? You know, I'm a, I'm a born-again Christian. God is in my life and whatever else. He provided for me with the insurance company and he keeps me safe out there on the roads with my cell phone. And he, he helped us to have, you know, three healthy children in the hospital. And he helps me to be an upstanding member of the community because we go to this famous church building here. How are you different than the lost? You're not. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. You know, if you have real true faith, it'll be a testimony to the lost world. Being dead, it'll yet speak to them. Hmm. Verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. You know there are going to be saints in the future that get called up when the Lord's timing is there. When the Lord says come up hither. And you're only going to go up by because you've been living by faith. You're saved. You're going to go up. Oh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you have to somehow die in a state of grace or something. No, I'm saying you're going to go up. But uh, are you pleasing God with your life? It's a testimony you should leave behind. Verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Living by faith is diligently seeking the Lord. That's what it is. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Are we seeing the new world order? Well, we're seeing parts of it. Are we seeing the system of the mark of the beast? Well, we're seeing parts of it. Are you moved with fear? Are you doing things to get out of harm's way? I sure hope so if you went through 2020 and saw anything that was going on. How much faith did you exercise? How well did you live by faith? Trusting the Lord. They're saying you have to wear a face mask to come to work. You have to forehead scan. You have to this. You have to that. Social distance and everything. And you say, I can't be part of that. You're a business owner. They say, shut your business down. You say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll put my faith in God. God will preserve me. Are you really living by faith? By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. 
See, he should have had a cell phone because then he would have known where he was going and whatever because he could have GPSed his way there. And, and then if he got stuck, you know, then he can just call for help. How different the story of, of Abraham would be if that was the case. Oh, he had a good insurance policy. That's why he went in there and things. And I don't think so. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. And remember, she was born, that child was born in the maternity ward. She would never have had the child at home. I mean, think of the danger. Good night. You know, childbirthing at home is just, oh, that's, there's, there's so many things that could go wrong. You can't have a child without a doctor right there present. I should put up a little thing, you know, ain't, 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 sarcasm warning so the thin-skinned people can start leaving their comments or whatever. <laughs> Verse 12, Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You know, think about that, strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You know why you get so tied in with, with losing faith and you want to go to the devil's system for all of his favors and everything else? Because you forget that you're a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. What if something bad happens to me? You're a stranger. Who cares? <laughs> what if I die? What if, what if I'm away and, and I die or something? You're a stranger. You're a pilgrim on the earth. What are you so worried about? Verse 14, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now, the desire, now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Ouch! How about a kick right there? God is not ashamed to be called their God. You know what happens when you don't live by faith? Verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. You know what God thinks of you? He's ashamed of you. You can't trust God to do certain things. He's ashamed to be called your God. Think about it. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac... And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Huh. The government, Pharaoh at the time, far more powerful than any American president or prime minister in the UK or Canada or any other country, Hey, there's a rule out there. We just passed a mandate. What did Moses' parents do? Not going to follow it. Why? Because they had faith that God could preserve them. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Lord, I see no other way. They're forcing us to do this. There are mandates that have been put down on us. God... Show me the other way. Show me what you want me to do because I'm not submitting to these wicked devils. I'm not submitting to this wicked system out here. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Hmm. 
Uh, Brother Brian, I, I don't know what I can tell you. I, I had to submit to the coronavirus uh, stuff and whatever. I had to submit because otherwise I would have lost my job. I just can't trust the Lord, brother. Hey, hey brother, my, my, my wife and my husband, they're, they're not saved and they're not going to get saved. And, and, and they don't really want to dwell with me and we're just fighting all the time and whatever else. But I, I just can't do the divorce thing right now and whatever. And I, I'm just going to just continue to live in this miserable life and whatever. God's called you to peace. You're not bound to them if they're lost and they have no desire for salvation. You can't get along. You trust the Lord? Hmm. Verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. You see, no. The, 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 the wealth of Christ, the wealth of being a good Christian, the prosperity of Christ. It's, it pays to be a good Christian. I esteem that better than the, than the riches in Egypt. No, it doesn't say that. It says the reproach of Christ. Well, you're a Christian? Are you one of those? <laughs> okay, you know, weird people and whatever else. You don't have a cell phone? You had your child at home? You don't have insurance? What's wrong with you? you have no state marriage license? Your children aren't in the public school? You don't go to church? The reproach of Christ. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, like the world, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is un invisible. You gotta love that, as seeing him who is un invisible. <laughs> you know, did the Lord appear to him? Well, you know, technically, yes, he did appear to, the, you know, to Moses, but uh, there's a sense in which we can take that in, for instruction in righteousness. You know, I see things God's way by faith. Why? The Bible tells me what to do. That's how I see it. Was well, the Lord going to provide? I don't know. I live by faith. He'll take care of it. Hey, um, the Lord can provide for me a house when he's good and ready. He'll provide me with the right job or the right this or the right that. I can get a place without being in the mortgage debt. Well, brother, I, 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 you what? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Verse 28, Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, as saying to do, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith Subdued kingdoms. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Through faith, subdued kingdoms. Let's make America great again. Uh, okay. Are you going to do it through faith? I trust the Lord, no matter what. Cut all these little man-made little catch nets to keep you safe. No, I'm just going to go out and trust the Lord. Could we subdue America if uh, people that called themselves Christians had real faith and if they were living by faith? Yeah, we could. Well, what if we can't subdue America? What if we can't subdue the kingdom of America? Well, then you subdue the little uh, nation where you live, so to speak. Wherever you're at, you can have your own little nation. God is my authority. I'll submit to the government rulers when they're in line with the scriptures, but if they tell me to do something contrary to the scriptures, like was done to Moses' parents, no. I live by faith. Oh, brother, 
They're going to send around the government, the military. It's martial law. I mean, by the time this thing gets uploaded, there could be martial law in America, the way things are going. Um, they, have, they have cages where they're going to put people. There's guillotines. There's, there's mass graves that are being built. Do you, are you going to live by faith that God can keep you out of that stuff? It only works if you're doing His will, if you're saved. You want to compromise and go get in with the devil's system and go get in bed with the devil and everything else and go to the devil for permission and for this and for that? Got pulled over the one time I got I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Police officer had apparently nothing better to do with his time than pull over a Bible believing preacher that, you know, was not wearing a seatbelt. Whatever. And I said, I don't believe in that. I said, I my body belongs to God. And I said, no state legislature is going to tell me what to do with my body. I'm not hurting anybody by me not wearing a seatbelt. And he said, Well, he said, okay. He said, I see your opinion, sir. And he said, I, I respect that. And he said, But what you need to do is you need to contact the state and get a special card saying religious exemption from having to wear a seatbelt so that you can show it to a police officer in the future. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to go to the government and get their permission to do something that God gives me permission to do. All right. Uh, you know, I, I need to register my unregistered church. You know, that's one of our favorite little jokes we like to tell. You know, register your unregistered church. No, I'm going to live by faith. The Lord tells me to worship Hey, I want to meet with some other people and whatever else, but there's a lockdown. The, the, there's a special new virus that's out there and you can't go meet with other people. You have to put plastic, you know, pieces of plexiglass between you to avoid it. No, 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 no. We have to wear a face mask to do that. No, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to live by faith. The Lord will provide another way that I can submit to him and not to the wicked people of the world. For who, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. You know what happens when you live by faith? Righteousness comes as a result of that. Obtained promises. You want the blessings of God in your life? Walk by faith. Live by faith. God will bless you. Victory over sin is a great blessing. Stop the mouths of lions. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Just because you live by faith doesn't mean that it's just, you know, I'm not preaching Benny Hinnism and prosperity stuff that you just, everything just gets better and you'll get donations of millions of dollars just you know, an envelope shows up with $20,000 in cash in your mailbox because you gave to Benny Hinn or something. I'm not saying that. There's sometimes it can end with you going to a camp or end with you being persecuted or whatever else. Sure, absolutely. But if you live by faith, you won't care. You'll say, okay, Lord has a purpose in me going through this. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. The Lord has some reason for this. Hey, it's my time to die. Let's just say I am out in the woods sometime here. I'm going to be doing firewood and something goes wrong and I cut, I get cut bad and I'm whatever, and I'm bleeding, laying there dying. I'm ready to go home to be with the Lord. What in the world? Why do people fear death so much? Verse 36. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. God's not ashamed to be called their God. Wouldn't you like that to be said about you? They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Talking about people in the Old Testament, they hadn't even received the fact that Jesus died on the cross, paid for all their sins. They're there and they're having to go through some things and whatever else, looking out and saying someday, there'll be a, that Lamb of God will be sacrificed to take away our sin. But we have it. We have the promises. We have some in incredible things that are there for us. But look at verse 39. 
having obtained a good report through faith. That's where we're going to end this study. Do you want God to be uh, not ashamed to be called your God? Do you want to have the power of the gospel in your life? Do you want to have the promise of the Spirit? Obtain a good report. Well done, my, thou good and uh, what? Servant? Faithful. Huh. Thou good and faithful servant. Living by faith. Just compromising with the world. No, no. Um, I live by faith. I'm ready at any time to go to prison, to be tortured. Why? I'm a stranger. Well, what happens if the devil comes and takes away everything that I own? Okay. I'll live by faith. Um, you see, I understand the formula. Okay. When the devil gets permission to attack Job, what does he say? Doth Job fear God for naught? He basically put a hedge around him. He's just being blessed all the time. Let me attack him. Paraphrasing a little bit there. You can read about it, Job chapter 1. But uh, if all you ever want is blessing in your life, and you look like the world, and you act like the world, and you have all the world's little safety nets to keep you from getting hurt and whatever else, you're not living by faith. It's just not there. But if you're willing to step out boldly and say, you know what? I don't need this insurance policy. I don't need that. Hey, you know what? Uh, I think the Lord can provide for us. And I don't have to have this mortgaged house and whatever else and look like everybody else. You know what? If I have to be a, a wander about through the mountains or in caves and dens and what they did in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. If I have to go out there and be uh, homeless, uh, I think my Savior did that. Jesus, hmm, Paul, no certain dwelling place. I'm not saying you have to be homeless, but I mean, if it's the choice between conforming to the ways of the world, conforming to the mandates, the wicked mandates, or following the scriptures, what does it matter? If you're saved, what does it matter? can't tell you how frustrating it has been for me over the years that I see people and they say, hey, Brother Brian, I'm really blessed by your ministry and, and I really have learned a lot. I've been challenged and whatever else. And I'm excited and I'm happy and, and uh, I get to talking to them and I, all of a sudden, sudden I start realizing, you know, they don't really live by faith. They mess around with the world. They're, they're really no different than the world. And that's why some people, I just have to say, I don't know if they're saved. I don't know. Why? They look like the world. They act like the world. They have the same world's little standards and stuff to keep themselves safe and whatever. How do I know that they're saved? What's the difference between them and some lost person? What's the, what they say? What's a profession? I've been lied to many times in my life. People are talkers and whatever else. The only way that you are going to survive what's coming and soon, what this world is turning into, the only way that you're going to survive it is you're going to have to live by faith. And somebody that goes into the time of Jacob's trouble, they are really going to have to live by faith. Okay, it's going to be super bad in that time period. Um, I can't even fathom what it'd be like. I mean, I, I, let, me, let me just correct myself there. I'm wrong for what I just said. I can't even fathom what it'd be like to have the mark of the beast. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because of 2020. I can fathom now not being able to go into stores because they require face masks. Not being able to uh, do this or do that or this is locked down and that's locked down and you can't and they're telling you things that nobody ever had to do before. It's all countries. It's not just some thing that stupid Americans are falling for or whatever else. It's all countries. Um, the Lord is going to call you to live by faith more and more as time goes by. And quite frankly, I think that there will be saved people that uh, are compromised into the system. And the Lord just simply says, hey, you're living like the, the lost wicked people. I'm ashamed to be called your God. And you're going to be a partaker with them when my judgment hits this country. 
You're not living by faith. You've made a mess of your life. I saved you. I paid for your sins on the cross, died a horrible death, and you have no desire to get victory over those sins. You want to look just like the world. The devil offers candy and you go on over and take it. Okay. Forsaking all I trust him. I pray you take heed to this study. I pray that I've challenged you. I pray that the Holy Spirit, I pray the Holy Spirit's getting into your mind right now into your soul, your spirit, and just saying, what about this? What about that? I pray He's convicting you. Don't submit to me. Don't, I'm not your authority or whatever else. The Holy Spirit's your authority. Scripture. Now, if what you're doing doesn't line up with the Scriptures, then you better change. If you want the promises of God, if you want to live in eternity and have the Lord Himself say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I know that that's what I want. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.